Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of the new John Benjamin album, Well, I Should Have. John Benjamin is a famed jazz pianist who at a very young age was found to be a prodigy within the jazz community, actually studied under the great Mr. Duke Ellington, who helped him get his chops up to where they are today. I'm kidding. John Benjamin is actually a comedian, a writer, and an actor, more specifically a voiceover artist. You might remember him from such animated television shows like Dr. Katz, as well as Bob's Burgers, where he plays uh, Bob. And uh, one of my favorite characters he's ever played, Coach McGurk, on Home Movies, uh, which I still think is uh, one of the greatest shows to ever grace television. And on this album, John Benjamin has teamed with Sub Pop Records to release a jazz album where he is featured on piano. The issue, though, is that John Benjamin does not know how to play jazz piano, hence the title of this record, Well, I Should Have Lear Learned to Play Piano. But despite this, he has been paired with guest musicians on this project who actually do know how to play their instruments, bass, drums, sax, all of which is brought to the table by these fine gentlemen, their performances, their playing on this record. It's tight, it's not too flashy, but it is competent and on point. I guess there may even be a few performance highlights on this thing like Scott's saxophone on the band's rendition of It Had To Be You. His playing is very fluid and he does the song just about as much justice as you could do considering John's very sour playing in the background kind of ruins the mood of the song. And Dave's bass solo on I Can't Play Piano Part One is actually pretty fantastic. It's actually so good it kind of causes John John Benjamin to yell out in some kind of fit in the middle of the solo. I think he actually yells, um, play it, Joe, which is kind of confusing since I, I don't know of anybody involved in these sessions whose name is Joe. Maybe it's kind of a play on the idea of like of the phrase, play it Sam or play it again Sam, but that seems like a bit of a stretch. Or maybe that's not what he was saying at all, I don't know. But this is one of many occasions where John Benjamin is is yelling during the recording and I guess kind of whipping the band up into a frenzy of a really intense playing. Every Everyone except him, really. Because John Benjamin's piano playing on every track of this album is uh, god-awful. Especially on moments like It Had To Be You. Uh, listening to John play with this band on this record is kind of like watching someone with two left feet try to dance during a ballroom competition with a decorated champion dancer. But I guess that in general is a part of John Benjamin's comedy style, putting himself in situations that are painfully awkward and destined for failure. Although I will say, uh, when it comes to his playing, his performances on this thing, I will respect his time and his rhythm on a lot of these tracks. It's not really as off as you would expect, given that the selling point of this album is that John Benjamin doesn't know how to play piano. Uh, again, he sort of hits a lot of his marks when he sort of needs to be soloing, or I guess kind of backing up the rest of the instrumentation, if only he were playing the right notes and chords. But that actually kind of puts us in a position where we could play a pretty fun prank with this record. If you want to see who the most pretentious person in your friend circle is, grab this album, have your buddies come over, put the record on, but before it's on, just say, hey, this is a really great jazz album, just found out about this jazz record, the piano is especially good, just let it play, let one of these tracks play out, and just kind of see what their reaction is, see if any of your friends are like, oh yeah, wow. His playing is amazing. And if anybody actually does say that or tries to really kind of understand the record, see where he's coming from, yeah, he's, he's really playing it different, man, then, you know, have a laugh. And that's pretty much the vibe of every single track here, especially the songs I Can't Play Piano Parts 1, 2, 3, and 4, which make up a bulk of the album. Thankfully, uh, the songs are short, they are punchy, they are very basic and straightforward. The album lasts about 30 minutes, so the joke doesn't get drawn out for too long. But that's not to say that every single song has the same exact thing going on. I mean, for example, part three of I Can't 
play piano, sees John and Ska on piano and sax kind of trading places back and forth. And John, it's almost like during some of his performance here, he's like given up on trying to sound halfway or even part of the way decent as he's just kind of running his fingers up the piano keys. And Dave, it's almost as if Dave is trying to either emulate John's really noisy bad notes sometimes or maybe kind of tease a musical idea out of him that sounds halfway good. And I Can't Play Piano Part 4 has a bit of a Latin vibe to it, especially coming from the rhythm section, but John's piano playing makes sure that the song goes down like some day-old Taco Bell. Now this album ends, as all great jazz albums should, with a 1 minute and 30 second song about butt sex. Yes, it is kind of a rap rock song with John Benjamin rapping about that sweet, sweaty butt sex. And outside of that, there's not really anything else to say about this album. It's uh, maybe a good gag record to buy for somebody, the jazz lover in your life. You certainly could play that joke that I mentioned earlier with some of your buddies. And uh, aside from that, I mean, this thing is, um, what? Hey, Tran. Zishin, have you given this record a listen? And if you have, what did you think of it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Why? What do you think I should review next? And that's it. Antoine Fantoine, Mr. John Benjamin, keep being a funny guy forever. Hey everyone, you know who it is, Anthony Fantano, coming on here to tell you about our brand new website, which we dropped earlier this year, so it's not brand brand new, but the good people at Squarespace are the reason that we have it. And there is a link down there in the description box where you can get at a discount your own website for your home business, personal hobby, whatever. And I'm also here to tell you that on this website brought to us by Squarespace, we also have a playlist that we released pretty recently. It is a Bjork playlist starter pack. So if you've been kind of waiting to get into Bjork, you don't exactly know where to start or anything like that, we have given you a series of tracks that are worth checking out and should get you well on your way to becoming the world's most preeminent Bjork expert. And uh, that's about it. Thank you for loving. Thank you for hating. Have a nice day forever.